Hello, everyone. My name is Svetlana Sakova. I work at JetBrains, and today I want to speak about Kotlin for Android. JetBrains is a creator of IntelliJ IDEA, and uh, the slogan of my company is Develop with Pleasure. And today I want to share with you how pleasurable can be Android development with Kotlin. JetBrains actually is a creator of several different IDEs for different languages. That's why you shouldn't be surprised that several years ago, inside our company, we decided to create our own language, writing so many compilers with diff for different languages. Um, do you hear me well? That's okay? Yeah, that's great. So, let's start. Kotlin is a general purpose language. It's not designed specifically for Android. It just can be compiled to Java byte code, and thus it works greatly for Android. That's it. It has second JavaScript backend, but today we are not interested in it because we are interested mostly in Android. Kotlin is a modern and pragmatic language. What do I mean by this, by, by it? Actually, uh, nowadays there is really something like a fuss about these modern languages. iOS developers have Swift, there is Scala Groovy. Now Android developers, to some extent, can use Kotlin, and it, it works great for them. So what's it all about? Why do we need a new language at all? Because, you know, we have Java, it works great. Why, do we just, why can't we just stick to Java? From my point of view, it's about the power the language gives you, this modern language gives, gives you. At first, uh, it, gives, uh, it helps you improve the quality of the code you write. It's a well-known fact that the most time you spend when you're like doing something, you read the code. And uh, uh, when you, 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 and, uh, you want this code that you read to be as expressive and as readable as it can be possibly. So these modern languages, it's the, the, the common feature of these modern languages. They can help you improve the readability of the code you produce. Thus, in two years after writing it, when you return to it, you just very, uh, very quickly understand what's going on here. Then, mm, to some extent, all the developers can be compared to artists, and uh, their code can be compared to a piece of art. And these modern languages help you to write more beautiful code, to, uh, to write more expressive code, to express easily what, what's in your head. And uh, at last, but not the least important thing, it's about productivity. Now the world is crazy about productivity, and to some extent we are as well. And these modern languages help you write the code faster, read it faster, and uh, have this uh, final result in uh, less time. So, it pr mm. so there's all these modern languages have in common. They are concise, and expressive. You don't have so many boilerplates that you used to have, for example, in Java or C-sharp, if you're talking about Swift and C-sharp. Several different features, language features, help you to achieve this, to, to achieve this goal. I'm talking about type inference, for expression functions as first-class citizens, extensions, and so on. We'll, we'll look at them uh, soon. And on the other hand, it's expressive enough. Uh, it writes you to uh, it lets you write, uh, write abstractions and to extract more into libraries. So there's like a common thing about these modern languages, and um, you might be convinced that, yeah, it worth trying. What's more about Kotlin, what to some extent differs it from other competitors, is being very pragmatic. Kotlin is pragmatic language. At first, it's safe and fast. It's safe uh, in the meaning that Compiler protects you against more types of errors. It's a common practice nowadays as well. I'll show you. But the thing is, uh, the language is faster than you used to have, uh, safer than you used to have. Uh, then it, we want this language to be fast enough for us, and that means we need a language st with static typing. Because comparing to dynamically typed languages, statically typed are uh, faster when you write the compiled code, when, when you run the compiled code. 
of course, uh, is for, from dead brains, so it almost obviously has to have good tooling. And I actually have IntelliJ plugin from scratch, and uh, even when we don't, we didn't have like Kotlin compiler written at all, we had rename, refactoring, working for us, and other smart things. And last words, very important, th that is very important requirement for us as a language designers. We have to, we want to have really good compatibility with Java. So when you have your existing Java application, you can really easily continue developing it in Kotlin. So it's not just uh, useful for like starting new project in Kotlin, but uh, f uh, you can continue developing and mix in one project two languages. And uh, there is interoperability works great in two sides. So you can use Java code from Kotlin, but it's almost obvious because uh, all JVM languages work like this. But on the other hand, you can usually easily use Kotlin code from Java, and uh, this fact really differs Kotlin from like other la other JVM languages because it's not a strong requirement for everyone, but it's a strong requirement for us. It's just the reason for it is very simple. Uh, at first, at JetBrains, we wanted to develop IntelliJ IDE in Kotlin, and IntelliJ IDE is a huge Java code base, and you can't just write it at all. The other consequence of this fact is that Kotlin works greatly with all those like standard libraries, standard Java libraries, for example, Android SDK. So you can uh, use everything you used to have, used to use, uh, but in a new language. That's just works. Okay, so then I want to illustrate what I've already uh, to, uh, talked about in one example. It's a well-known example, a famous example of billion dollar mistake. It's a term that was invented by Sir Tony Hara. He called by this uh, the invention of null point references. Very often mm, our application cr can crash like this. So like mm, there is null pointer exception in your application, that's all. There is all, there is all information you have. Okay, so you can just, you, you can then go and uh, try to understand what's, wh what, ac what actually has broken. And it's a modern approach in these modern languages to, ah yes, the message is very informative as well, to, uh, to convert this error into compile time level. So what's the problem? We write code and then we have this error only at compile time when we run our application. But what we want to, we want to have compile time errors instead. And uh, it's common for all these modern languages. So uh, if you, for example, uh, heard uh, how it's implemented in Swift, it's very similar concept. It's like well-known concept and in Kotlin we have uh, the same approach. What, what is it? In Kotlin we have nullable types at and non-nullable types. This uh, type with question mark, string question mark, uh, it's nullable type and it can contain null reference. When we write just string with, without question mark, that means it's the, ver the variable of this type can't contain null reference. That's easy. And uh, when you dereference it, you can safely dereference not nullable types. You can't safely dereference string value, but you can't easily you can't safely dereference nullable uh, expression because nu nullable va va variable because it can throw null pointer exception. I think it's, it should be very clear. Of course, uh, Kotlin sh provides uh, lots of means how to work with such situations. So, what should you do? Uh, to the reference, this nullable reference. There, is, there are several different uh, ways. At first, you can do it like in, class, uh, like in classical Java, just check whether this variable is not null and then dereference it. But uh, you can do the same in Java, but it's too verbose. Like your code will be full of these if checks and uh, it will be unreadable at all. So, uh, Kotlin gives you more. I would say, if I'm not mistaken, this uh, saved reference was stolen from Groovy or something. Uh, that means if the 
variable is null, then return null as a result. Uh, who knows wh what it means uh, already, so I shouldn't explain it. Who knows? Okay, so I can spend some time for it. So actually, the result of this expression will be nullable type, nullable int. You see, so uh, this string variable can contain null, then we dereference it, we uh, invoke something, some function, and the result is nullable as well. That's very convenient. Or, for example, you can return default value. So in this case, if the string, the s variable is null, then return zero. We have, um, the compiler, Kotlin compiler is rather smart for checking whether you can, what you can do, what you can and what you cannot do with these null, nullable references. So for example, you can, uh, is it, like, it's a usual approach in Java when you check for null and then like return or invoke some function that throws exception. This failed function actually in Kotlin throws an exception and um, uh, Kotlin compiler can notice this and uh, allow you to dereference it safely afterwards. Or there is a way to throw null pointer exception explicitly. Actually, in Swift, they have similar notation. Uh, they have similar nullable types, and they as well have this dereference, uh, null pointer, uh, this dereference uh, operator, uh, unsafe dereference operator. But in, in Swift, it expressed with one exclamation mark. In Kotlin, it's two exclamation mark that says you just don't overuse it. Try not to use it at all. It's just, uh, it's just in case. Try to to safely check all your variables for being not null. But uh, there was like theoretical approach that is very nice, and it's totally true in pure Kotlin. So in pure Kotlin, you don't have this problem of null pointer exceptions at all. You just can use it safely, and uh, this it works. But when we are talking about uh, interoperability with Java, about mixing Kotlin code and Java code, then some tricky things begin. Because actually, at first, we have this, uh, at, fir at our first release, when we started Kotlin, we wanted to, uh, th there was a question, how we should uh, interpret Java types? All, these ja all, uh, all the values that are returned from Java functions. And very uh, simple approach, but, but simple and safe approach, is to interpret these types as nullable. In this case, you are totally safe, you are guarded against null pointer exceptions, but it's very inconvenient to use such code because there are a lot of checks uh, for, not null, for being not null and so on. So actually, and uh, uh, when we released this first version, there was very concerns like, I have to write all this exclamation mark in my code and it looks barbarous, I don't like it. But then we changed this approach and now, you see, all Java types are considered as like special platform types and you can interpret them as you want, as nullable or as not null, depending on your circumstances. So you can save you, you can use safe dereference on them, you can use just dereference on them, everything you want. It just illustrates that Kotlin tries to be pragmatic. At first we have this scientific pure solution with nullable types, but then it turns out that in real life there is better solution. It's not just as like pure as the first one, because you will have these null pointer exceptions inter mi when you mix with Java code that throws them and so on. But anyway, it, uh, but then it is much more convenient to use. And I wanted to show you another, another thing that was added actually re recently. Usually in Android, you write an activity. And for example, you, can, you want to uh, store your data in an activity. And uh, with nullable types, there is a question, what should you do? What type this where this uh, member in activity should be. And um, there is different solution. You can make it nullable, but it's inconvenient because um, then in all the code in activity that uses this variable, you have to dereference it. You have to dereference it safely. You have to you put exclamation marks and that's not useful. And uh, recently we added a feature. We added so-called late init properties, latent variables, you mark this member as 
late in it, that means that, in is, that it's, it is initialized lately, like afterwards, and then you can initialize it in the uh, on-create method of activity and use it as not nullable type. Maybe someone who tried Kotlin uh, knows that there was some not very clean, not as clean solution before, but now we use this and we're happy to, um, to introduce it. Okay, so we will now uh, switch to live demo. I hope it will work, actually. Uh, and uh, what I want you, what I want to start with is I want to show you how easily it is to start development in Kotlin. So I prepared a project for you that is, that is basically generated by default. So I generated, I uh, created a new project in Android Studio and um, uh, it generated me default activity. So what, I, what should I do to start developing in Kotlin is two things. At first, I can convert this uh, Kotlin, this Java activity to Kotlin. I have a special action, convert Java file to Kotlin file. And you can do it with all Java code. And uh, actually, it is very, um, useful way to start developing. For example, you just do, don't remember how to express something, like an um, how to express an AMP um class in, Kat in Kotlin. Because you know in Java there is a similar concept, so you can write it in Java, convert, and see wha what it looks like. And then this tool is very useful when you uh, mix, when you try to, when you start adding Kotlin code into existing Java application, and you can uh, very uh, slowly convert some parts of it to Kotlin. For example, if you want to change some class significantly and you really need like some lambdas working there and uh, add some new features of these modern languages, you can convert this class to Kotlin. It will work with uh, old Java code and then add these new Kotlin things there. So we'll see, oh yeah, it works. You see that it basically looks very similar to Java. There are some other different keywords. For example, the, func the functions start with fun keyword, Kotlin, programming in Kotlin is really a lot of fun indeed. And, um, but then the code looks very similar. But you have to do the second thing to start developing. You should configure Kotlin uh, in project, this action. You can um, use this action, you sh have to, uh, choose the, ah, the only thing uh, what was di that was different for, for this Android Studio is I installed Kotlin plugin beforehand. So uh, now Kotlin plugin is installed, it can be downloadable from uh, rep the, uh, the repositories. So um, this action changed some settings for my project, for my gradual file that loads everything you need for to use Kotlin. So now you can start developing in Kotlin the application. That's it. Very easy, very easy, very easy. And um, so now I want to, um, let's move on, and I want to uh, show you um, a bit more co real Kotlin code. Ah, at first I want to show, I'm, uh, have a really very simple application uh, that I want, uh, uh, I want to show this application, then I want to show you some Kotlin features that we can uh, see even on this simple one. So it's just two buttons, and uh, I can click on them, and, and it turns very easy. Okay, so if, yes. Ah, I found it. So this is my project, and this is uh, activity that, uh, sorry, that uh, does all the job. Uh, you see there is, um, I, I'll con try to continue talking while I'm fixing uh, this presentation mode. Uh, so you see that you have a simple, um, can, can you actually see the, the is, is it good? Okay, th that's great. So you have a very simple uh, activity and uh, mm, what difference you can see in this simple example alre already is working with lambdas. 
Who have uh, heard about lambdas generally in programming languages? Okay, so I shouldn't explain it. That's, that's great. I'll just show you their syntax in Kotlin to uh, understand what's, wh what is going on. So in Kotlin, uh, lambda is always placed inside curly brackets, like this. You can, mm, and this is an expression of, of function type that uh, get, uh, has int uh, value as a parameter and returns, uh, in this case, Boolean uh, value as a result. So we can use this expression just like usual function. So you can call it with an argument and it returns true. But what's more important, you can use it uh, and you can pass it as a, as an argument to another functions that on uh, their side mm, need function, function parameter, like this. So the, uh, uh, I hope you should be uh, familiar with these filter functions. Uh, there we create a list and we can filter it using our predicate and uh, we can parse the lambda as well. So with Kotlin you have all this uh, mo modern functional approach to usual collections and that works. Uh, in Kotlin, we have a convention. So in this example, we just uh, filter the, the list to, to the resulting set. We want our values to, to be placed in this set. Uh, so in Kotlin, you have this uh, convention that a lambda argument can be uh, placed outside the parentheses. Yes, so actually this is a syntactic sugar for this, for the first line, these two lines mean the same. Means mean the same. This one, and this one, and uh, it's just a convention. It's just a syntactic sugar, and I want you to like uh, remember it because at the end of the talk we'll use it. You'll see how. So uh, there is uh, shows you how in Kotlin you can work with collection. What is really interesting in this example is the fact that. It is Java standard collections. We do not have our own collections library. We use Java standard collections interfaces and so on. That allow you that allow allows you very good inter interoperability and actually it's very important for the size of your uh, final application because if you have your in Kotlin, for example, if we had our own collection libraries that you uh, work with, you would have put this collection library in every application you build, for example, in every Android application, and it increases the size of this application. But because we just have some extensions to Java standard library, uh, the size of your application isn't as big as it could be. And, uh, but, okay, we have this uh, list, and it's actually usual Java array list, but why w you, do we use the function filter on it? Because in Java there is no function filter on list. There is a question, why? And actually the answer is in Kotlin we have so the future so-called extension functions. If I'm not mistaken, it was stolen from it was stolen from C sharp. Who have heard about these extension functions feature in some languages? Okay, that's great. Some of you have heard. I'll show you. Uh, what, is it, what is it, what it is. Yeah, so in Kotlin you can declare an extension function to some class. And uh, what's interesting, you can use it as just as member function after the dot. So in this example, this last char is an extension function to string. And, uh, mm, as, and uh, in, this, in its body, you can use this reference as a reference to the receiver string. And as usual for this reference, it can be omitted. So in this example, just it's the same code, this is omitted. This reference is omitted. And uh, what's very convenient about extensions is that at first the code is much more readable. You saw in this uh, collections example, you, you just uh, write list dot filter and it works. And filter is an extension function. And this, all these functions are visible in completion. And this, in this case, I've called smart completion in IntelliJ, and it shows you this last char function. 
So um, how we usually write the code, we, we write expre variable and then we, we like invoke completion and what should I invoke? For my case, you just try to, to, to find uh, the, the, uh, the right method and uh, extensions are visible so it's very useful to, to, to use them. Okay, so now we can return to uh, activity. and uh, uh, see what uh, uh, interesting things we can do with extension, using extension functions with just in, in, in Android context, in Android environment. environment. At first, uh, this function toast, make test. Uh, in Kotlin, we can express it a bit short, like this. How it works. This toast function is an extension function to activity because you see in this case uh, there is toast th there is this reference th th this re the reference this that should be um, anyway placed somewhere and in Kotlin we can use uh, toast as an extension function to activity and uh, you can use you can invoke it in a very short and concise way and uh, such things can be done with lots of functions in Android just uh, making their usage a bit more readable. Okay, but I've uh, shown you that there was like another uh, button. Yeah, there, 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 here it is. Sorry, just a second. Uh, I, I want to show you how to, for example, um, start a new activity in Kotlin, you can mm, you 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 can just do it as usual as in Java. Just create intent, put uh, some arguments to it, and start an activity. But in Kotlin, you can do uh, it in a more concise way, in a bit more concise way, like this. Uh, again, it works because there are extension functions, so. Uh, this, for example, single top flag is an extension function that you just uh, can call on this on the result of start activity that returns an activity, and uh, uh, actually you see this short notation to is as well an extension functions an extension function on everything that uh, allow you to build a pair of objects. So this uh, this is a pair. Uh, contain that contains string and integer. So does this code looks a bit simpler? And uh, for example, if you don't have uh, any flags, you can do just like this. Just start new activities, specify the type, and uh, uh, parse the ne necessary arguments. So there's an example how these uh, extension functions help you simplify the code, help you make the code more a bit more concise and a bit more easy to read. And uh, now I want to show you a uh, like killer feature of uh, this Android development of Kotlin, why it is really so uh, nice to, to use Kotlin, because actually in this example, uh, you see this find view by ID uh, syntax, and there are different frameworks that help you eliminate these implications because it's very annoying ca to call them all the time. And uh, in Kotlin, you can write just like this. And uh, you don't need to use find by ID at all. That's it. So in Kotlin, you can just access uh, views by their names. And uh, this name, this click me button, actually is of type button. So you don't need to cast anything. You just access your ID, your uh, views declared in layouts by the IDs in, in a language. I sh I've shown you uh, that there are extension functions in Kotlin. And actually, uh, there are extension properties as well. And uh, this click me button is this extension property that should be uh, imported explicitly. So, uh, the, the, I, I'm, st I'm st so so the, the, the idea is very simple. You just can use this ID as a, uh, as a view, 
as a, as a name of your view. And uh, I want to now I want to to explain how it works under the hood. So uh, here you import these two pro ex two extension properties to your activity, and uh, again, like we saw with the toast function, actually it's an extension property on activity, and you can omit this reference and use it just as name. And uh, you have to, uh, there is a special place where all these syntactic properties are generated. So they're, they're just syntactic, uh, uh, synthetic, so you, they're not real properties. Mm, uh, but you import them and use them. Okay, uh, then I want you to explain a bit more how it actually works. And uh, uh, how it works, uh, and so there's this slide uh, again explains how, how this accessing these views in a show short concise syntax works. Uh, in every Kotlin activity, a special cache is generated that stores uh, the views, the, the, co the correspondence between uh, IDs that are declared in your uh, uh, XML files and uh, actual views. And uh, then there is a special function get cache view by ID that uh, under the hood uh, invokes actual get view by ID uh, function as usual and uh, puts its value in a cache. And uh, this cache is um, lazy, so it's created only if you use it. Actually, there, there is, so if you don't use it, this uh, uh, functionality in your project, you, ju you just, uh, the, the in, um, in, Kot in Kotlin activity, the, uh, the, the field is generated, but it's like not initialized and th it's, it, it, it's just one field. And uh, uh, when you access to, uh, to, the, uh, to the property, uh, what is generated under the hood, uh, the, 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 the actual code that is generated is invoking this secret uh, hidden function from your activity and um, casting it to the right I'm sorry, I forgot uh, to mention very th like the most important thing, not most, but very important thing for this feature. And it's not a, a part of Kotlin language. It's actually a plugin, Kotlin extensions for Android, that can be uh, installed together with Kotlin plugin, and it works, uh, for example, with Android Studio. Actually, it's created a plugin, and it can work with uh, just your Kotlin code, but uh, it's not a part of a Kotlin language, but it's a uh, a plugin that generates all these caches for you, for your Kotlin activities, and inside Kotlin activities you can use them by just by name. That's how it works. Okay, uh, let's now, may maybe anyone, uh, maybe any questions for what I've told already? We will have the, the, the question section sent in, but anyway. Okay, so I'm moving to my last example. Yeah, uh, all these extensions actually are, uh, for example, Toast extensions and other extensions, are, uh, it's a, uh, they are a part of Anchor library. So if you want to use Kotlin for Android, you uh, just use Anchor library. And uh, it consists of several different parts. One is just a bunch of useful extensions that you can um, uh, exploit for in your Android applications. And another part is uh, something like um, presenting you a modern idea of uh, declaring your uh, layouts, your usual Android layouts, dynamically. I'll show you how it works. Uh, ah, I'll show you uh, the second uh, very stupid application. At first, uh, this application shows you uh, like mm, uh, where we are and uh, uh, it shows my city, Saint P I'm from St. Petersburg, Russia, and it shows uh, me the time, the time difference betwe between my city and wh where we are now. And um, you see there is just, I have just, uh, the, the view for this uh, application is extremely stupid. It's just, uh, let's look at, let's look at it. It's just, uh, activity name, yeah. It's just two uh, t uh, table rows with text view, text clock. And uh, that's very 
very simple. But uh, then I bump into this uh, program and uh, I'm thinking, okay, but I want to add a new tag, a new location. And uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to add this location dynamically. So I want to implement this button, add location. What should I do in this case? Of course, uh, there are some special views for, for this, but with Kotlin you can do uh, this thing. Um, you saw uh, in XML we had a uh, table row and uh, two elements there, text view and uh, text clock. So okay, like, oops, like this, yeah, for this time. And in Kotlin you can declare the same layout that you uh, s have seen in XML, but in the code. And, this and uh, there is correspondence between them, so whatever you can do in XML, you can declare in the code. And, uh, uh, but what's uh, really uh, important here is that um, you can, it's a code, and uh, you can use just your usual constructs in code. So, for example, here I have this uh, table row, but what I can do it, I can, uh, I have the locations, uh, the list of locations set stored somewhere in my code, so it's, it's not important right now. But what I can do, what I can do is I can uh, iterate over my dynamic locations and dynamically add these uh, layouts to my code. You can do the same things in Java. You can uh, declare the same layouts dynamically in Java, but in Java it looks too verbose. You have to declare the, your view, your text view, for example, then you have to uh, set all the parameters there, and that's, that's uh, too long. In Kotlin you can do like this. And uh, you can use this uh, location, for example, uh, you can, you, you then use uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this, uh, these views just, just in your code. Okay. Actually, this, uh, this syntax for creating uh, layouts uh, dynamically is, is uh, to some extent a bit controversial because uh, usually in your applications, uh, like there are designers who write your layouts and it's not as easy to rewrite everything in code. So it's nice, it, it works, but uh, it's something new that should be tested. But what you can do easily is, um, without any doubt, you can uh, use these, uh, uh, these four, uh, f maybe for alerts or some small uh, things. For example, oops, sorry. Uh, for example, uh, here is uh, just second. No. Okay, I'll try to show you. Uh, the structure, and then we'll see the code um, afterwards, because I want to not, not try to uh, to spend time on uh, changing the font. So uh, here there is a simple question. There is a simple layout that just uh, shows you, uh, ask you a question. And then uh, if you answer yes, there is another simple layout that uh, suggests you to type the location and time zone. For example, I can type uh, Kotlin, because actually Kotlin is a name of the island uh, near St. Petersburg, so there is the same uh, time. And uh, I can add this location. And uh, when we are looking at, at this in Kotlin, uh, what we can do is uh, we can uh, you see there is an extension function to an activity that uh, invoke this alert. You can uh, build these simple layouts dynamically in Kotlin. And uh, it's, uh, this structure is looks, looks really very similar to what you, seen, what you see on the screen. 
And uh, for simple alerts and for simple dialogues, it's very convenient to, to use this technique. So in this case, uh, this alert function uh, takes uh, a parameters. And uh, uh, actually what is what I wanted you to, to remember in the beginning of the talk is that uh, in Kotlin, very often uh, curly brace, bra um, brackets mean that there is a lambda. And actually this one is a lambda. And alert is a function that takes two, st two strings as uh, arguments and then it uh, takes as a parameter lambda that uh, describes what the dialog should be um, sh should should be shown, and uh, then I won't uh, go deep into the d detail. But uh, the idea is that in Kotlin we have function and extension extension functions, and to some extent we have lambdas and lambdas with an implicit receiver, to some extent extension lambdas. Um, there is not very. Oh, the, the the idea is that uh, as we've seen with Toast function with uh, some with extension properties. Actually, this p positive button and uh, negative button functions are invoked, are called through this reference. They are extensions to implicit receiver hidden in this lambda. So uh, the details are not very important here. The main idea is that in Kotlin, you can create these layouts dynamically, and it can be very useful for like different cases, for very complicated applications, or for just uh, very simple uh, cases of these layouts. So in this uh, case, you see that uh, there is a layout for uh, two uh, area, two text areas, mm, times location and time zone, and you see that we have this edit text. Uh, when we build layout, we build this. Uh, we just invoke this function edit text. And then we uh, here can uh, define the behavior, what we should do if, uh, the, um, if I choose positive button, if I choose yes, and uh, uh, the, there's the name, and there's the, uh, my, and, the, and then goes what I actually do. And um, where it's useful, there is very, uh, there is a lot of options to extract this code somewhere, to express like this logic to, it's it's all the code so you can uh, declare this code as a function and just use it when you build your uh, dynamic, when you build your layouts in such a way. Okay, uh, there is was all for these uh, dynamic layouts. If you have any questions, don't hesitate, find me on my booth and ask more details about how it all works and how it, all should be used and so on. Now we are turning to our presentation and uh, something I want to to, um, to mention as well. Um, actually, there is, uh, uh, is th this illustrates the, th this lots of digits just illustrate the idea that Kotlin uh, jar file that you have to uh, add to your final Android application is rather small. I've already explained the reasons behind this we don't have our own library, we don't recreate everything, we just use Java standard library and provide a bunch of useful extensions that uh, actually can be then uh, removed by ProGuard if you don't use it, if you don't use them. So there is that Kotlin runtime is not very big and um, comparing to some other libraries. So uh, it's not a problem to use it. These digits are used from Jake Wharton's article. Uh, to some extent, I just don't want to redo it, just to mention Jake Wharton here. Mm, then another mentioning of Jake Wharton is uh, in some time we have some problems with annotation processing for Kotlin, but now, but now we fix it and uh, most of your frameworks just work with Kotlin because it's, it, it, ju it does work. You can use Kotlin with them. Then there are some references. Uh, there is Kotlin side, there is uh, Kotlin extension for Kotlin extensions for Android plugin. There is a plugin that I've shown you with these uh, mm -hmm. uh, views by ID, uh, when you just place uh, the, uh, the, the name of the view in your code, and uh, it, it works great. Um, 
there is uh, there is Anchor Library, uh, and uh, actually there is even Anchor DSL preview for Anchor Library. So when you build uh, these activities dynamically, you can preview what you have. And uh, if you're interested in Kotlin, there is uh, a way to uh, there's there are different ways to learn Kotlin, and one of them is uh, to uh, to learn it by currents. Uh, we have the now we have them uh, at JetBrains side, but very soon we'll uh, post them just on a web uh, uh, on the website, uh, so you you would be able to do them online. Now you have a project in IntelliJ and several like 50 tests to fix to learn Kotlin. And then uh, there is another project actually started uh, yesterday. There is a book we started the mining uh, preview yesterday, and uh, if you are like me, like read, uh, you like to learn by reading books, uh, then uh, find me on the booth and uh, ask uh, what is uh, the a uh, 5% sale code for this book that is valid for like two days, the conference time. And uh, another thing, tomorrow will be a uh, Kotlin challenge. I will uh, give uh, anyone who wants uh, their list of Kotlin tasks. Uh, they're, they're rather simple, so it won't uh, take you a lot of time to fill it. And uh, as a present, I'll have this uh, nice Kotlin t board. There is uh, upper part as well, but actually, uh, you'll uh, there. There are ten of these t boards, and uh, you'd be able to win it and uh, to like uh, drink a bo uh, drink a tea on a Kotlin t board, reading Kotlin book, <laughs> writing Kotlin code, and uh, life will be just great. Okay, thank you. And okay, guys, yeah. do you have any questions? Uh, I heard that, for example, Android binding library, which was the previous topic on this conference, uh, is using Kotlin. And mm, have you uh, maybe any information that Kotlin will be uh, official language on uh, Android? Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, you see, uh, it's uh, politic, and I don't do politic, and uh, I, I, have no, I have no idea. I can't answer this question. It's like Google things and, um, and so on. But at least now understood is based on IntelliJ, and um, it's an uh, optimistic thing <laughs> about it. Okay, uh, my question is about this. Uh, actually, your code when you uh, did the ID po dot and set on click listener. I'm wondering if it's uh, this view that uh, the ID is referred is treated as view or the specific view like button text view. It uh, treated a specific view. Oh. It's I this uh, click me uh, button was treated by as button. You don't have to cast it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. How do the stack traces look and how does debugging work? Because always with these languages, with Groovy as well, your stack traces are uh, a mess. You see, uh, with Groovy, the problem is, uh, I think uh, I think the problem might be uh, connected with using dynamic type of kind, uh, kind of Groovy, side of Groovy. And uh, there it's obvious that you you have these dirty stack traces because there's a lot of logic hidden under the hood when you use dynamically typed languages on JVM. And Kotlin is just the same as Java. And uh, what's more, we are working hard to uh, make every Kotlin feature looks from Java as usual Java. And, uh, mm, and uh, that's why you, you, you will you'll have just your usual stack traces and that's it. There is no secret, some secret things there. Is the, is the uh, when you attach a debugger, for instance, and you have a breakpoint, are you in let's say Kotlin land, where you, your breakpoints work no, in Kotlin? No, you are in, in a bytecode level, anyway. Okay, so if you have like two lines of uh, Kotlin uh, code, which would translate to 20 lines of Java, and mm. you have your debugger. You don't have such uh, code, basically. So, um, 
<laughs> that DSL that you presented, basically. That yeah, yes. There, 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 mm, uh, there are some, but, um, but mm, okay, it uh, just uh, shows you the, the, the line where you stand. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, recently there is some support for lambdas as well. So if you have like several lambdas uh, on, th on the one line, it will stop uh, like in this, in this lambda. So uh, debugging just works and uh, uh, because we don't have lots of problems as a statically typed language, it just works great and there is some special support for lambdas as well. Is it ready for long-term uh, development and for production? Uh, we, um, actually, we uh, haven't released it, but uh, we are going to release it like very, very soon. And uh, after it's released, it can be officially used as uh, long-term development. That's all. So now, if anyone was following us, uh, now we like changing things very fast. And every milestone uh, breaks something in the previous milestone. That uh, things are going so fast because we are really very close to official release, and uh, we won't uh, work long in such circumstances. So we'll release it uh, anyway, very soon. More questions? Okay, I think it, that's all. Thank you, Svetlana, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you guys Listening. for attending, and see you at the next presentation. Thank you.